Hello guys, I'm Rasola, and last week I released a video showing you how to use open broadcast software, which I'm using right now, to stream and record videos and what all the many settings in it meant. It is a very technical software that is not very simple to use in its entirety. But you know what is simple to use in its entirety? Bandicam. This is probably my favorite backup recording software that I use if I ever have troubles with OBS and I need an alternative. I purchased a dual license for this and I don't regret it. It was very useful after using NVIDIA Shadowplay, which I have an older tutorial for if you want to see that in the playlist below. But Bandicam, how does it work? Well, Bandicam is really simple. And let me show you, not only is it a fraction the size of OBS visibly, but it's even smaller than that. This, to get started recording, this is all you need right here. It's just this part. Bandicam really goes for the simplicity factor. So let's go over things one at a time. Got your Bandicam logo. You got mostly, uh, well, this is a lot of output information. This is your actual output folder where the videos will go once they're recorded in case you need to access it quickly. You could schedule a recording to start at a specific time. So for example, if you leave Bandicam open in the background and you have some like scheduled MMO event every day, well, you can schedule the start and end time of that recording so that you don't even need to think about it. It will just start and end whenever you want. Nice little help tools right here. This is really the main meat though. You got screen recording mode, we'll record desktop screen and web video, but you can customize it. You could just set it to audio only. You could set the recording to be focused around the mouse. Specifically, you could have it focus specific windows. You could see my OBS over there, for example. You got the full screen displays. You could either pick all displays or one specific display. You could show or hide the control bar, which is referring to this. There is the rectangle on screen recording. So basically you can even custom size this if you want to just specify a recording angle that you wish to use. OBS supported all this stuff too, but this actually lays all the controls out in front of you in a very simple way. And you can also just do this to specifically select a recording area without any specific parameters set. Next to that, you have HDMI device recording mode. So this is for your webcams or any HDMI capture devices like capture cards, for example. You could record directly from those with this. There's the game recording mode. This is like the game capture for my OBS tutorial. This will just detect games, anything using specifically DirectX, including video players, and it will record directly from them. The capture card can also be accomplished on OBS, but it's not as simple as just pressing this button. You can also add a webcam overlay to a separate recording, such as game recording. You would click this to add your webcam overlay. You can add speakers, add microphone here. Let's you select what you have and customize the volumes. You can add mouse cursor effects. So you ever see those old tutorials, someone clicks and there's like a ripple effect around their mouse. That's what this is. It's just one of the many recording settings. You can add text overlay effects to your recordings. You can hit record, you can pause. F12 is a shortcut. Make sure not to combine this with the Steam overlay or you might run into some problems. You could just use this as a screenshot as well. F11, make sure not to combine that with the Steam overlay. And then we can expand it to look at some more stuff. So the home page is essentially, it's just gonna default to a get started and have you browse through all the things that I'm showing you anyway. There's a little tutorial that prompts you at the bottom of the screen and you can see separate to just opening the output folders, you can actually just browse the output folder here and see everything in there. And then it gives you some options like playing, uploading, editing, and deleting all from in here. But then we want to go to the actual general, for example, where we will have, say, the ability to customize our output folder. You can have this Bandicam window always be on top of things. So, for example, if I were to drag another window over on here, this would stop it from going under that. You can start Bandicam minimized in your tray right here. You can run it on startup and there's some other advanced settings as well. Here you could further see the scheduled recordings and you can have even auto-complete recordings, such as if it goes on for an hour, reaches a certain size, or if it's been silent for a certain period of time. And after recording, you can then 
start a different recording. You can stop recording and exit Bandicam, shut down or hibernate the computer as well. So, for example, I can start a recording to monitor something, have it end after an hour is reached, then immediately start a new recording to make sure I'm not losing anything, you know, because I'll probably be outputting an MP4 and I don't want to have any of my footage get corrupted. That's a pretty common way to use that. Then go over to videos. You could set that hotkey for the record button. You could set a separate pause hotkey. You could choose whether or not to show your mouse cursor in your video. The mouse click effects can also be accessed here. Webcam overlay can be accessed here. And then the format and the presets, the settings, this is all the important stuff. They make it very simple for you. They start out with simple things. I have customized these with how I've used it in the past. I had it on 16 megabits, 30 FPS, H264 using my AMD H.264 hardware encoder, you got AAC 160 kilobit, but you can just change it. So I can hit default, for example. And what is it default to? CPU X264 with a not CBR quality. I can go into settings and customize that. It outputs in either AVI or MP4. AVI is lossless, so it wouldn't be too bad to record to, but you might need to convert it remux it into a different container which you could do with obs which i showed off into mp4 later but mp4s can corrupt if you record directly to them you can select your codec it will pretty much just detect what you have you can use mpeg4 which is um hmm i wouldn't recommend that but it, that's a decent cpu option i suppose but you'd probably more commonly just want to use this is actually X264 because it's a CPU software encoder. H264 generally, AMD VCE, it'll be NVENC if you have NVIDIA or QuickSync or something like that if you have Intel. This is your old school recorder. This is what probably all of you will have supported. Hevic, this will be your H265 encoder. This is a step up, but not as widely supported. And then AV1, this is the brand new open source option. You need the newest hardware to support this hardware. They don't present it as a software option. They only really present H.264 and MPEG, of all things. Currently, I've changed to editing entirely in H.265 recently, instead of using H.264, which I've been using pretty much up to this point. So I, for example, would want to set Hevic and then come in here the options change very much based on what you have selected here, by the way. Because if I had H.264 open, you see you got different controls. But if I put it to Hevic, for example, and I like to record in CBR, so I would say bitrate based, not quality based. Quality based VBR, that's basically saying it'll change the bitrate, which is the amount of data that makes up your image that will determine how well it looks. It will adjust the bitrate to maintain a consistent quality. It recommends this, but I don't personally work with it. I work with CBR and you could set a keyframe interval. This is in milliseconds. So you could just type in a number. So it defaults to like one and a half seconds. I can default it to every two seconds. I can default it to every one second or go with one of their presets. One or two seconds is usually the recommended. Usually every two seconds is the recommended. So 150 is completely functional and I wouldn't doubt anyone would have a good experience if using it. You can then set your bit rate here. It gives you some options, but you can specify it is in kilobits. For example, I like 14 megabits. That would be 14,000 kilobits. There's also the FPS options you can use. Variable frame rate, which is recommended. I don't, I wouldn't recommend this actually. I would not, if you have the option, because you're recording directly in MP4, for example, I would say prefer CFR. I wouldn't say VFR, but apparently if your encoder's performance is not good enough, it'll fall back on VFR. But CFR is always better if you plan on editing your footage. And considering this is Bandicam, the recording software, and not partially streaming, then I would definitely recommend just saying to prefer CFR because editors handle CFR way better than they handle VFR. It gives you some common presets, but you could type in whatever you want. 30 or 60 is usually going to be your go-to. Editors might encourage you to use 29.97 or 59.94, but that's just because those are the standards. This will not save you on performance, and in fact, these are usually, in my experience, like three times harder to render. So I would recommend 30 or 60. 50 is a good in-between that is commonly supported on things like YouTube. 
If you need any other FPSs, then you already know this. You already know your use case. I don't need to tell you. Then they give you some preset bitrate options for audio. You have AAC or MP3. Ah, I'd always recommend going AAC. I wouldn't recommend MP3. They give you more options for MP3, which is weird, but I would recommend just AAC. 160 is above the usual standard, but that's a pretty good one to pick if you want to make sure it's decent quality, not overstuffed. You have channels, you have stereo mono, you can have surround sound if you support that. And then of course the frequencies either use 44.1 or 48. Do not use any of these others unless you're in an extremely special use case, in which case you already know this and you don't need me to tell you it. I'm just saying the common things so that someone that doesn't know would be able to know. And then we go ahead and we have that all set up and you see we have our new setup. Then there's also things like, again, this could be used for Capturing images, which you can have a hotkey for. You can repeat screen capture repeatedly. You can add a logo overlay to your screen captures. If you so choose and show your mouse cursor or not, you could choose how it comes out. PNG, JPGs of customized quality. And then you have an about section that I'm not going to click on because that shows your key, your license and the register information that you have here. Bandicam does have a free version that comes with a watermark, but you can purchase it as well. It's not free, but it's very good. It's very simple. It's very good though for recording. Maybe not for streaming because, well, it's a recording software. It also comes with Bandy Cut if you choose to purchase that alongside it, which is a sort of attached tool for splitting your footage and combining different videos. Think like old school Windows Movie Maker editing, very simple editing, not complex, very cheap, very, very cheap, but it's mostly good for just putting highlights together. It's not really good for more detailed editing like I somewhat do. So I personally haven't bought it or haven't used it, but if enough individuals like this guide here and they do want to see something on Bandicut, I could potentially purchase it and show you guys how to use it because it is pretty decent for what it is, especially for a cheap price. You could go to the Bandicam website to access any information about that. But that is generally how you use Bandicam. Very simple program. It's very new user friendly and that's why I love this as my second option and why I purchased a two licensed copy of it because whereas it's so simple that anybody could use it it still gives you the amount of depth that i would need from any recording software basically i don't need any more depth than this so that's why i would definitely recommend it not sponsored by the way i just genuinely enjoy bandycam and this is how you use it so hope you guys have found this guide helpful I will probably be going through more things that I utilize in my editing software. And yes, this is Fraps down here. <sighs> if you guys are enjoying this or have any suggestions or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And hopefully I'll see you guys on another video.